Hello everyone, bringing you another video today featuring some items from the collection of my friend Matt. Obviously this is one of several videos I'll be uploading looking at some items from his collection. And what we're looking at today is some Yugoslav uniform. This is the Yugoslav M55 uniform. So we have the, the jacket, the shirt, the trousers, some headgear and the boots to have a look at as well. And that's what we're going to have a look at in some detail now. So we have another uniform to look at here and this is the Yugoslav M55 uniform, obviously shirt, got the, the tunic or jacket and the trousers there and some other bits and pieces to have a look at. So Matt, uh, once again, please take it away. Brilliant. Okay, so this is the, the M55 uniform used by the Yugoslav National Army, the J sorry, Yugoslav People's Army, the JNN. Um, it's, as the name implies, it was cleared for adoption in 55, 1955. Didn't really reach sort of full um, distribution until the 60s, but thereafter remained in use all the way up to and even in places beyond the fall of Yugoslavia in the 1990s. Um, it was, there was a replacement thought about in the, uh, the 70s, which was the M77. And there was also attempts at camouflage uniforms later on in the 1980s. Mm. Uh, this, this, like I said, this was the old faithful. Uh, it was frontline use until well into the 70s and the 80s, and then sort of started to be relegated to uh, territorial defense units and rear echelon guys, but was still uh, very much in use. It's made from wool, very heavy, very quite coarse uh, Brillo pad wool. It's uh, it's not great. It's it's quite itchy. I have worn it. It is it's something um, very warm. Uh, the Yugoslavs were had quite a, a well developed uh, textile industry, but they, they really liked wool. Um, and the M55 is is entirely wool. There was no uh, as far as I'm aware, there was no summer cut that is in cotton or a mix or anything. It's, it's all wool, all the time. But you say you sometimes want it, see it worn in shirt sleeve or yeah, the, absolutely. The, the cotton shirt. The, the drill is, shirt. Yeah, the drill shirt. Um, you, yeah, very often in summer, summer dress, you see it worn without the tunic, but mm. with full webbing, helmet, obviously combat order. And it's, it's much better. The shirt itself is quite, quite heavy. Uh, it's quite nice actually. That, that's quite comfortable, the shirt. The, the 75 itself. there is the date. The it shirt. is, yeah, it's 75 dated shirt. Um, Obviously, I think that's the there's manufacturers makes because it was uh, it wasn't state armories making these as far as I'm aware, I see. Uh, or state tailors, I should say, be the, the correct term. Um, obviously, the shirt's got shoulder boards because again, in in shirt order, it would be worn with rank sliders. Yes, which the tunic has, but the shirt hasn't. The I'm, I'm afraid I'm not overly clued up on rank. I believe that's a corporal, right, or the equivalent of a corporal. Mm -hmm. um, they just slide on and off, little, little wool things, little epaulettes. Yes. Um, obviously inside the jacket here, we have, uh, this is all sizes. So uh, I'm not sure what that one is, but that's height. I believe that's chest and that's waist. And all in centimetres. I think all in centimetres, yeah. yeah. 81 dated. Uh, I think that's an acceptance stamp. Uh, yeah. The, the jacket's lined with a, a slightly lighter uh, cotton material, mm -hmm. similar to the shirt but lighter, little little hanger there, uh, it's uh, four button, four pockets, each button's plastic and it's got these nice little stars on them, again like I said the jacket's got a nice lining, little interior pocket here. Yes, uh, possibly for a dressing, I know that's a... I think I don't know, actually. The dressing is, I have dressing somewhere and they're quite large. They're oh, quite right, bulky. okay, so maybe not then. Some, Possibly, something else in there then. But, yeah, but. given that it's down here, mm. out of the way, I'd, I'd hazard a guess it's something personal. Yes. Maybe so something so. emergency. Um, but yeah, there's no, other than that, there's no interior pockets. So there's no, no nothing nothing on the cuffs, no buttons, no adjusters, mm. fastening straps or anything like and that. And will it button up to the collar? There, there's a yeah, button hole there. So, there is. so you have an additional, oh yes, you've got an additional four hole button there under the collar. And a little hook and, and eye thing there. To so close it right up if needed. I, I imagine rarely yeah. worn that way, but yeah, you've, yeah. Got the, you've got the, the option to do that, yeah. Usually, I think, believe it was usually worn open collar. Yes. Uh, it does button down like that. And it's, that makes sense. That probably be for cold weather wear. Uh, there are places in Yugoslavia that get very, very cold. Of course. Lots of mountains and so forth. Yes. Um, the trousers. Oh, Velcro. <laughs> uh, we've got a little trouser belt here. It's just leather. Simple uh, buckle belt for mm -hmm. the trousers. The Yugoslavs used, I think exclusively, I think it was calf leather. Oh, right, okay. I may be wrong on that. It was a specific type of leather and it was all they used. 
uh, again, trousers. Same sort of material as a tunic. Yeah. Or blouser in Serbo Croatian. Uh, that's your maker's name, I think. And then again, sizes. I'm afraid my Serbo Croatian is not fantastic. Uh, 1982, the date. 82 dated, yeah. yeah, yeah. So as you can see, like I say, they were they were made well into the 80s. This mm -hmm. wasn't surplus stocks that they were using. They were still manufacturing these. And they would still see widespread use. Even though you'd supposedly had the new uniform come in the 77. Which, which never really achieved no. full distribution as it was intended to. Um, just at the time, I suppose. Mm. The, the 80s became quite uh, fractious politically. Yes, indeed. indeed. So, but it's interesting to see. You obviously have this longevity in uniforms in, I suppose, Yugoslavia don't really fit into the, the Eastern Bloc. No, per se, no, it's but, its own little but thing. You, but you do see that longevity in, in the uniform designs. Yeah. Uh, around that era, which, yeah. is, which is interesting, and then you've got the uh, well. I was going to say we could talk about the the, the, the armband. Yeah, there. absolutely. This is a, as far as I'm aware, this is a duty armband. So if you were on duty around the base, you would be wearing this as to identify you as a person who a had authority and b could be called upon if something happened. Uh, I believe that's uh, Serbo Croatia. I believe that translates to de uh, says de journey, which I believe translates to duty on duty. Um, mm -hmm. I'm probably wrong. My Serbo Croatian is terrible. If you know, sorry. <laughs> um, but that's that's as I understand it. That'd be worn, I believe, on the left sleeve. Yes, and that just that just fastens with as you yeah, say, just, Velcro, as we just, saw before. It's sticking to the uniform. Yeah, absolutely. Up there, hook and eye closings, Velcro closings. It just fastens around your bicep, and that's that's mm -hmm. that. It's just a simple identifying mark. Yes. Um, the helmet. There's, there's the helmet and the, the, the Titovka cap. Titovka we'll do the cap, cap first. I think. Yeah, there, absolutely. Yeah. So this is the famous Titovka, this is a post-war one obviously, uh, it's a simple garrison cap type thing but it's it's sort of, uh, comes from the, the Yugoslav wartime mythology when it was the hat of choice of the partisans mm. and it's, the style was retained with minor modifications. So we've got, I'm not sure what that is, that's hat size which is, is 57, 76 dated and the manufacturer's mark there. I'm not sure about that sticker. That might probably not authentic. No. It's, it's and then you've got the stitched red star on the yeah, absolutely. The front it's there. It's, uh, it's not stitched on. It's just embroidered. Embroidered. Right. Directly, yeah, directly embroidered, embroidered. Rather is, is is how I should describe um, that. Yeah. The you sometimes obviously these have been in use in one form or another since the Second World War. Mm. The distinction is this V at the front with the flaps. Right. The World War Two ones, uh, I believe, just go sort of more more across. There's not as much as a of a, of a, v, of a dip a v, a v down yeah. the centre. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a little garrison cap. Yes. Uh, worn in a variety of ways. You, you see a lot of people wearing them in some very strange ways, but it can be yes. worn completely on the head, on the side, mm -hmm. uh, perched on the back or on the, towards the front. A bit of personal preference allowed there. Yeah, yeah. they were they were indulged a little bit, I think. Uh, and, and then the helmet. The I helmet, suppose, yeah. This yeah. is the the M fifty nine. It's sort of iconic. It was used from nineteen fifty nine all the way up until uh, the Balkan Wars. Mm. There was an improved version, which I think is the 5985. Yes. Which has, as you see, it comes down here. It comes up slightly more at the back, does the, the updated one. And has, right, okay. has different attachments for the liner inside. Um, that was done to solve the problem soldiers had when they were crawling, because it comes down over the neck. As you're crawling, it tends to catch. And it interferes, yeah. Push forward over yeah, your yeah. eyes. Uh, it's, I imagine particularly if you are carrying something on your back. That's yeah, it bumps and gets annoying yeah. and... Uh, potentially injures the bridge of your nose. No rolled edge. Uh, no, just a raw edge. Quite yeah. heavy actually. Steel, I think. Fairly, fairly heavy gauge steel, yeah. yeah. Uh, like most steel helmets would have been technically obsolete at this point. Yes. Anything other than... could, could we just have a more detailed look at the liner? Sure, well? yeah. Just, just I'll, I'll get the camera in there. It's similar to the M1, interestingly. It is quite, yeah. yeah um, leather towards the front and mm. around the sides. Adjustment strap at the yeah, back. Yeah, at the and back. Then. And then we've got one, two. Apart from the fact it attaches directly into the helmet rather yeah, than having the separate, the separate line. line. Yeah, the actual, the, the internal suspension is similar to the M1. So. It's quite complex. There's one, two, mm. three, there's double attachment points, both the line around the sort of cradle itself. Yes. A single point, single point, single piece, sorry, two piece, single point chin trap. Yeah. With a little adjuster there. Uh, and inside, I believe that's some sort of thing you can see oh, I there. Oh, just see. Uh, the right angle here just there at the top it's got a little bit of a glare i'll just maneuver that if i can to get the glare off it sure uh, well, there we go that's it there we go you can see the, the marking inside there that's it go cool. so yeah. um yeah uh this was like i said used all up until the balkan wars it does come with a camouflage cover mm -hmm. made out of uh plastic sort of leaf shapes uh known as i think it was the salad or the cabbage it was known as mm -hmm. it looks quite silly but it's quite effective yes um and that was, like I said, that was the helmet that was used. There was attempts to make a Kevlar helmet at the back end of the 80s. 
but that saw service all the way through. Um, prior to this, you notice the shape is sort of reminiscent of the, the style helm. Yes. From World War Two. Prior to that, they actually used sawn down style helms. Right, okay. Uh, with the, the neck guard, the, the ears, the, the wings sawn off. So it was almost like a, a cap shape. Yes. Certainly in the uh, the shape of the, the, the bottom rim, the way it comes down round yeah. the neck, is right. certainly somewhat reminiscent there is a, of a style helmet. an apocryphal story that it was Tito himself who designed the helmet. And it, All right, okay. Uh, in, uh, whether this happened, I don't know. I can't no, say. No, I never met so, him and never asked him. So. No. Fantastic. And the last thing to have a look at is the boots, which we're going to get the into the shot. Oh, oh yeah. yes, absolutely. So these are the uh, these are the M55 boots, and they are absolutely fantastic. They're one of the favourite items in my collection. Um, they're just completely bonkers. They're, they're, they're ridiculously over-engineered. Um, they're actually quite comfortable as boots. I've worn them uh, for a reenactment weekend, and I had no problems with blisters. They fit quite nicely. I mm. had thick socks on, but no problems with blisters or getting sore or achy or anything. Um, they are at the core a jack boot, but they've got a buckle at the top, a buckle across sort of the instep, and laces extending up to at least the ankle. Um, I think it's seven eye. Yeah, seven eye eyelids. Mm. I, I have absolutely no idea why this was a thing. No. Um, we were saying before, it's what in terms of construction, they seem to have taken the tongue. And if you imagine you've got an ankle boot and then the tongue comes up and flares out to form the actual shaft of a jack boot. Yeah, and then it's, it's, and it's, it's, it's actually stitched on. So very, very strange. I, I can imagine they are comfortable because they, they are wearing them as a jack boot, but then yep. there's a lot of adjustment to absolutely. actually have them comfortably attached around the, around the foot. And there is uh, they're quite supportive. Uh, adjusted in around the foot, yeah. yeah. Supportive, which is, um, uh, is is probably a good thing actually because of the terrain of Yugoslavia. There's yes. lots of mountains and uplands areas. You don't want to be rolling an ankle uh, or going over, which is, you know, would put you out of action as a as a soldier as an infantry. Yes. And the Yugoslavs being an infantry predominant army, probably could do with good boots. Um, uh, decent treads. Excuse the excuse the mess. No. Um, screwed screwed on as well. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. screwed on. Uh, these are I don't know if you can see just there. It's sixty six dated. And then yes, that's a, nice and clear. A maker's mark and Z Zagreb. Zagreb, yeah, Zagreb. that's the one. Yeah. So Croatia, I believe, in Croatia. Um, yeah, like the uniform, these were retained in service for a very long time. You can still see them quite often in the Balkans, Balkan Wars in the nineties. Um, and were they worn with the trousers tucked into them? Yes. Yeah. They so were they were worn as high boots. Yeah. yeah, you didn't have. Uh, uh, the exception to that was the the mole camouflage suit. Right, and that was that came yeah, down you, over them. You, fast, yeah. you put your trousers in the boots, and then you, the mall suit would just be worn as an oversuit, so it would it would cover the boots down to obviously trousers. <laughs> I have to say, from a, not just from a military collector point, they are just a very cool pair of boots. They're they're very very cool. interesting yeah. design, combining a, an ankle boot and a and a jack, uh, a jack boot in one. Very trendy. Um, yes, we have a few more markings just inside the neck of the mm. boot here, top of the on top of the, uh, the shaft. Top of the shaft there, yeah. yeah. Anything lined around just where you're obviously yeah. the opening. It's, uh, yeah. where it's going to be rubbing your calves most, mm. most uh, tightly, I suppose. Uh, I think that's size 42. The standard sort of European sizing. Yeah, yeah. Centimetre, I believe. Um, yes. Something like that. Uh, it, they fit me fine, which is, which is all I'm bothered about. Mm. <laughs> uh, not sure about the other markings. Possibly some sort of lot number or batch number or something like that. And then, mm. again, some of the markings on the other oh, side. Oh, sorry, you can see. In there. Yes, there we go. Some of the markings just in there. Very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic yeah. boots. And um, they finish off the M55 uniform. They yeah. do, yeah. Uh, obviously, there's the webbing, but um, that's, that's uh, sort of separate. Yes, yes they are the, the last key component to the M55. Very, very interesting. Thank you very much indeed, Matt. Much no appreciated. Problem. Thank you. So I do hope you found it interesting looking at this. A big thank you to Matt once again for allowing me to come over and film some of the bits and pieces in his collection. Obviously something I'm never likely to collect, but it gives a bit of variety to the channel and covers topics which I don't think are all that well covered on YouTube. Puts a bit of information out there for those who may be interested in uniforms from, I suppose, the other side of the Iron Curtain in a way, although with Yugoslavia that isn't really the case, of course. Slightly different situation. Uh, so nevertheless, interesting having a look at this uniform, or at least I found it so, and I hope you did as well. If you have found this interesting and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.